My name is Vahid Chitsas, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Well, my name is Sarah Rose. I'm the spiritual CEO on Instagram. I'm tuning in from Phoenix, Arizona today. Awesome, awesome. How's the weather in, in Arizona? Um, it's getting hot. We're in triple digits, but um, June and July will be a little worse, but this is it's still bearable. It's nice out right now. Awesome. So let's dive in. What the heck is spirituality have to do with business? Oh, my God. So <laughs> that's a big loaded question, but... Um, all right, so you don't have to give me all the answers. Just give me the basics because a lot of people are confused, or I should say, I'm confused. Okay. So I just want to get clarity. What the heck does that have to do with business? Well, there's this huge awakening that's happening on the planet where people are waking up to step fully into what their soul is calling them to do. And so when you're truly being called on a soul level to step into your calling or your mission work. This is where spirituality and entrepreneurship and business combine to what I call sacred leadership, conscious leadership, conscious business. This is where people all over the planet are stepping up to truly step into what their soul is calling them to do. And this is, yeah. So that's, I guess, in the shortest way possible, that's the easiest way to explain it. It's, uh, and it's also though applying spiritual principles to your business, like growing your business with clarity intention the highest and greatest good for all involved you know where it's the old paradigm of competition and the hustle and grind and all that stuff is phasing out it's really moving into alignment um and into flow with spirit which is the opposite of competition and the opposite of hustling grind it's it's all slow and 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 actually a lot easier than the old way of doing business coming into true alignment with intention intentionally uh with your business so what's the difference between awareness and consciousness what's the difference between what awareness and consciousness i thought there were well awareness and consciousness basically like spiritual awakening is basically coming into higher awareness consciousness is that is that pure observer point in you so you know the you that's watching this video right now, the you that has these thoughts going on, the asking these questions, sitting in that chair, wearing that shirt. Consciousness is the part of you that's observing all of that behind your, the observer, the silent witness within. That's pure awareness, that's pure consciousness, that's part of the spiritual awakening journey is opening up to being that. All so let's fast forward. If we have a higher percentage of business owners moving towards this direction. Where do you see the foreseeable future? How would this change the world 10 years, 50, 20 years down the line? What do you see there? Well, I see more heart-centered entrepreneurs and conscious-driven businesses, brands, and organizations coming together to move the planet forward into a higher frequency, higher vibration, where people are operating instead of from ego-driven tendencies and ego-driven um agendas more heart-centered agendas that are in the common good you know in the highest greatest good for all involved so ego-centered you know um agendas would be all about like what's in it for me what's the most that i can get how can i i i benefit from this the ego loves the i the separation from everyone else but didn't we just learn a beautiful lesson with COVID that there really is no separation that we're all in this together and that we can't really separate, we, we are all connected and little changes in just one of us can affect the whole, right? So we're moving into a more heart-centered business, soul-centered business, where now it's like, how is this a win-win? How can what I do elevate the planet, elevate healing across the planet, elevate consciousness across the planet, help people live an easier, healthier life? Um, and not so much about in it, like competition-wise, like, it's very, it's a very lackful mindset to think, you know, what's in it for me? I have to get more on my side because I have to take it away from that. That's like insinuating, like you have to keep yours and you have to hold on to it, whether that be money or assets or anything, you have to hold on to yours, which what that really is saying is that there's a lack there, meaning that you believe in lack versus abundance, because now you have to like, 
compete and you have to scrap to get ahead and you have to hold on to what's yours and everybody against you is is a competitor that's a very lack mindset so we're moving more into um we're moving away from competition more into collaboration where collaboration is all about there there's enough for everybody to go around how can we share our resources and share what we have inside of us and get it out into the world whatever that passion happens to be whatever that soul calling it happens to be to help um where it's a win-win for everybody and that's not it's not coming from a lack it's not coming from a scarcity mindset it's not coming from an ego-driven fear where you feel like you have to carve out your piece of the pie because if you don't someone else is going to get it that's the opposite of an abundance mindset so we're moving more into an abundance mindset and also a, a unity and oneness consciousness meaning we're no longer going to be seeing ourselves as se so separate we're going to see how we are interconnected with all things nature the, the animals, each other, like. So I got a question for you right there. I was watching a documentary with my daughter, 15 months old. I don't know if she understood some of it, but I'm pretty sure she got some. So they want the alpha, whatever in the animal kingdom. They want the alpha and the alpha male and female competition between other males. So the alpha and the alpha, they make, and they make good babies, stronger babies. Isn't it in nature there's a competition? So how would that be different because it's not that we ha we have those biological tendencies in us and that's what we've been primarily operating from what you just described is what we're moving away from because we have this gift of consciousness we have this gift of you know living in this dualistic society and choosing between light and dark and choosing the you know we live in this at least in this environment this polarity the animals are driven by fear and competition and also by survival of the fittest. And so we do have that animal reptilian brain in us, but we are evolving past operating solely from that and stepping into higher consciousness, higher consciousness that comes in with a higher vibration than what, you know what I'm saying? So, so we do have that. Which is a lot of where the ego driven fear comes in, right? That lack of, you know, lack of security, lack of lack of safety or fear of sticking your neck out out of the tribe. That's when imposter syndrome pops up. You don't want to stick your neck out too much because back in the day when we were hunters and gatherers and we survived in tribes. Um, if you stuck your neck out and you were ostracized from the group, like a tiger is from a group today, it meant certain death. Right. So we still have these ingrained in our biology but we're evolving past that as a species because we we have this gift of consciousness so my question is this if i'm in a team environment and i have another person to my right and i have the the, the competitiveness in and i want to go win or i don't mean just monetarily i just want to feel that I did put in the effort, I went all the way, and we accomplished this goal. So if this person doesn't want to compete, you're saying that's okay? If that person doesn't want to compete with you? Or together we want to compete against a goal that we have. Let's say last year we were able to help 500 families with something, the services that we offer. This year our goal is to do 600. That means we got to compete because if you don't get to those families, our competition is not so similar. Right? This is where so, I bring, yeah. So this is, go ahead. Sorry, I don't want to cut you off. Go ahead. No, no. So I'm just saying, like, what am I missing in between? You're not missing anything, but the intention behind it is the difference, right? So are you intending to help more families because you want to bring greater healing to these families? Or are you coming from an ego centered standpoint where you just want to, you know, necessarily make more money to fuel your own pocket? Uh, I, I, I. Is it coming from a place of love for all involved in the highest and greatest good? Or intentionally, is it coming from greed and ego and more identification with the self? Because what ultimately is happening is an evolution of our soul and the intention, the power of the intention be hiding behind each of our actions is what actually counts. So, for example, you can have a philanthropist in the neighbor in the community that wants to donate all this money. And if his only is it ego driven to just look like he's a big shot and to gain more fame to, you know, puff up his ego so he can like maybe like hide from some of his own insecurities. So he has to like be big and strong and look like a big pillar in the community or is he donating all of this money because he has a genuine interest to help the community the intention behind the actions is what is what is raising the consciousness of the planet and raising the vibration it's not the action in and of itself and achieving more and succeeding more at something that is a heart-centered 
you know, activity that's not ego driven, that's just expansion. There's a difference between expansion and ego dominance and ego, ego centered control. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to see if I can agree. Um, I'm pushing myself because it's a new way of thinking. Now, there's nothing I wrong would, with abundance. There's nothing wrong with abundance but and money you, and money and wanting to achieve more and give more and be more and have more. And like, there's this expansion that's part of our soul journey. You know, Oprah Winfrey does really beautiful work in the world. She's a billionaire. That That's not a good thing or a bad thing. It's just, it just is, right? So you can attract whatever you want into your life. You'll actually attract whatever you're a vibrational match for anyway. But um, this is just where the consciousness of the planet is moving. If there's a tipping point. So the philanthropist, if the big guy, let's say the rich guy, you have a lot of those um, guys in Beverly Hills. Wouldn't you say that that is good if you're feeding his ego? Because if you feed his ego and he feels like he's a muscle guy, he's showing muscles and he's helping. Let's say he gives a million dollars, helps a lot of family. That makes him feel good. Wouldn't you say that that is good? Because now he's going to go, okay, next year I got to do 1.5 million. No, here's so the thing with it's spirituality. It's all good. The only part, the only thing that's judging it as good or bad is the ego. The ego is what judges good or bad and causes the separation. So wherever anybody's at on their journey is exactly where they're supposed to be. There is no wrong or right, good or bad about it. The only person judging it is the, the only, the only thing judging that is the ego. And the thing that wants to keep us separate. And oftentimes we judge our we judge ourselves, which is like ego judging ego. It's like if we're do if we judge yourself for being like, oh, I just did this, I'm a bad person. Now you're judging yourself. You're putting yourself back in the duality box of good or bad. When we're actually moving towards oneness, recognizing that there there really is no good, quote unquote, good or bad. There's just experiences that we grow through and grow from. And everybody's at their own soul place in their journey. So do we have ego? I believe everybody on this planet, unless you're like an ascended master, is going to have some version of ego because what's ego? Ego is not the awareness. It's easier to describe what ego is not. And if you're even talking about it, you're already in your ego because ego is the witness from within. So the second you even start to verbalize and talk about the ego, you're already in ego because you're trying to describe something other than what it actually is, which is the awareness, like we talked about at the beginning. So now I probably won't be able to ask this question because I have not done my own research on the vocabulary that we're using, the ego. I don't know where the foundation is. So a thousand years ago, we didn't have the word ego. We were not using it. At what point did we create it? And what was the purpose behind that? So what did we use in replacement of ego 500 years ago? What did we use? There's in a lot of different... There's a lot of different theories on the birth of consciousness, the birth of the ego. For th a thousand years ago, I mean, yoga has been a 5,000 year practice where they've been talking about transcending ego in ancient yoga, ancient yoga wisdom for thousands and thousands of years. But um, so, you know, there's different. So let me ask you a question. If, if, there is a, if there is a coach, it stands in front of the middle of the street, beautiful body, beautiful looks, beautiful clothing, everything else. They take a picture, they put it on their Instagram. You want to call that ego? There's always ego hidden in being human. That's part of our human experience. So transcending ego is the journey. Nobody is has, if you're a human being on this planet, unless you've already reached ascended master status, like Jesus and your, or Buddha or like some of these other ascended masters, you're dealing with some element of ego. And this is part of your growth process. The difference is, are you aware of it? Are you using this as a tool for your own spiritual growth or are you running, letting your ego run amok underneath your conscious radar and drive the train? Which one's in the driver's seat? Your soul and your heart centeredness, questioning your ego along the way and using it as a tool for your own growth? Or is the ego driving the train? That's the difference. It's not whether or not you have one. If you're human, you have one. You're already here working with the ego as a tool for your own soul's evolution. It's about whether or not you're aware enough. This brings up awareness again, whether you're conscious enough to witness it and use it as a tool. So if for I'm own conscious growth. and I'm aware of it, and I still choose the ego, what, what does that? <laughs> if I am ever, so what happens then? Say this again. Okay. If, if I am, so I have ego. I am aware of it, and I'm still doing it. 
Well, yeah, you're, you, you're using it as a tool for your own soul evolution. So are you elevating yourself to higher frequencies by raising yourself to other, you know, for example, um, are you moving from states of, you know, victimhood and isolation or competitiveness to compassion, gratitude, appreciation, love? Um, are you rising to these other higher vibrational frequencies by using your ego as a tool? It's not about the ego being there. The ego, if you demonize the ego, it's the ego judging that as ego, right? Like you can witness the ego and use it as a tool in your own soul growth process. So the ego is not the enemy. The ego is something that can use, you can use as a jumping off place for you to cultivate higher awareness, which means what? A higher connection with the one that is, the seer, the, the, the observer within, the silent witness, the one that is already at peace, the one that is already oneness with everything, the one that when you, you know, the, the one that's connected to all things, because at the end of it, we're all energy, so there is no separation or divide. So are you more, are you using ego as a tool for your own growth process? It's not the demonized enemy that a lot of people want to make it. And, and it is your, is it your belief that you can run a Fortune 500 company thinking like that or having those views? Having spiritual views? Yes. Oh, yeah. Not just spiritual views, but operating at this level. Oh, yeah. And I, then, think, I, think, I think that you have the most capacity to catapult with ease at this level more than if you were using your ego to get along. Because anybody can make money. Anybody can come up with an idea and put pieces together and then, like, make money. But it's a totally different energy when you're in alignment with soul energy. When, you have, when you're being fueled from within and you're not using outs, you're not using, um, like, you're not always trying to manipulate outside circumstances, always looking outside of yourself for how to grow your business when you're using your intuition and your clarity. And then you come into alignment with the inspiration, the inspiration, and then you take massive action towards your goals. Not This isn't sitting on your ass just wishing for things, thinking it's going to come to you. This is the same way Einstein came up with some of his grant, he, you know, some of our greatest inventors will admit and have admitted and have been quoted that some of their best inventions and ideas have come from, they would strategically fall asleep or like find a way to get into what's called a theta brainwave state so that they could wake up and then start journaling right away. Why? Because they're no longer in their conscious, analytical, logical brain. They're in their, which is the more masculine side of the brain. They're in the intuitive side of the brain, the one that allows divine inspiration to flow to you and through you and out into their paper and out into their pen. This is called channeling. This is called automatic writing. But some of our, our greatest inventors tap into higher consciousness all the time. Look at Tesla. What did Tesla say? If you want to understand the workings of the universe, start recognizing everything as vibration. This is how they create, they tap into higher consciousness. So yes, I believe, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean if you think Einstein and Tesla and, and all of these other great inventors have made an impact in our world, I would say then, yeah, you're tapping into spiritual elements and spirituality is a great way to, to not only grow a business, but be a pioneer. Because now you're tapping into consciousness that you're getting infinite intelligence that on things that don't even exist yet in the physical world. I mean, think of how silly it would have sound to create the light bulb or the laptop or a fax machine or a TV if you're only thinking logically, right? Like if you're not getting divine inspirations on ideas. This is about opening up your creative insight, creative sparks of insight and allowing that divine inspiration to come to you and through you. Not just looking at what is and saying, this is reality, nothing else can be outside of what I see. If that were the case, we wouldn't have anything new and inventive and things like that. So yeah, I do agree that, I do believe that yeah, spirituality and incorporating spiritual principles uh, into a business will catapult you forward. Because you're working with infinite intelligence, you can't beat that. There's nothing I'm, just, powerful. I'm, I'm just thinking, I'm having a challenge thinking that how would you change the culture of the company or organization if you had it on the basis and the foundation that it is competitiveness, we might have some ego, we'll probably have some ego, and we are chasing that result. Sometimes that result is monetary. I'm having a challenge how you would go and change that from top What's to bottom. What's wrong with monetary? Why, you Nothing wait, wrong with monetary, no, but, know, but when the, way you, comes, the way you worded it, the way you said sometimes it's monetary as if that was like... A, a bad thing well yeah because sometimes with monetary maybe you're not thinking about heart center because if you had heart center sometimes 
you may not make the, as much as profit or you'll not be profit uh, that's a I would say that that's a very limited like perception of what it means to receive abundance you know abundance flows to you and you're able to do great things with your abundance so why would be doing great things hinder your ability to make abundance when good people make abundance they do more good things with it so it's like there is no separation there they are one and of the same impact higher impact higher influence equals more abundance and then you get to do more with that abundance there's there's no like well if i'm going to do hard this is one of the hiccups i see with spiritual entrepreneur you know what i mean like there's no well if i'm going to do good that in a way what you're doing on a subconscious level there is demonizing money you're demonizing the material but you can't because the material is part of the spiritual everything came from an idea first right down to the laptop the phone that you're watching this video on everything was an idea first everything came from spirit including money so you can't demonize any parts of the material because it's all spiritual but the way you worded that shows that there's a subconscious disconnect between success hitting targets and actually crushing your financial goals which you are more than welcome to do as an abundant sacred leader conscious entrepreneur conscious brand in fact i would say it is your duty to go out and build a conscious brand and crush your goals because we need more examples of heart-centered businesses going out there and crushing their goals financially. There, there is no disconnect there. And this is a, this is a belief that, is pla that plagues a lot of people because ultimately we do have this, oh, money is the root of all evil. Or if you gain a lot of money, you I don't, I don't believe that no, money I, is I, bad, I I'm believe, just saying. Yeah, but I'm saying on a subconscious level, society has been ingrained that way to think that if you want more or you have more that you're greedy or you know these kind of things and even if you're not well, it could lead to greed it could lead to greed it it would lead a greedy person to being greedy and of course there's a shadow side to everything and this is when conscious awareness comes in if you start to step into power and a lot of influence let's say you move into all of a sudden you move into a position where now you're a leader and a lot of people are listening to you there's a shadow side that can you can get it you can get attached to your ego. You could think that you're the shit. You could think that you're better than other people. You could think that, you know, all of these things. Well, are you well, aware? Sometimes you are better than other people if you're in that position. Are you though, huh? aware that you're letting your ego get in the way? No, your ego is not. If you start to view yourself as better or worse than anybody else, your ego is at play. So if you start to grow abundantly or grow in a leadership position, and then you don't recognize if those things are popping up, guess what? Then the ego then that's your spiritual work. Your spiritual work is to become more aware of that and question when that shit is happening so you can course correct and evolve your soul. It's not about being perfect. It's about recognizing, again, it brings us back to the core thing we talked about at the beginning, awareness and consciousness and being aware of it. Because there's going to be a shadow side that pops up no matter where you go. You can go from broke as a joke to Oprah Winfrey, but if it goes to your head and now all of a sudden you're all puffed up ego and, you, and you're operating from this ego dominance and, come, you know, it's all about me, 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 I, 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 and you're not coming from a heart-centered place, only you will truly know that. Only the philanthropist that's donating knows why he's donating, right? So the intention behind it. So you have to be consciously aware of whether or not ego is in the driver's seat or your soul is in the driver's seat. Your soul does not see separation. Your soul sees oneness. Your soul sees the highest and greatest good for so all of us. You... And your soul's not judging the right or wrong. But isn't it the definition of a goal that, what is a goal? Is is some type of a metric that you have that, that we establish that this is the goal. And typically goals elevate up. So if my goal was, for example, help 500 families last year, this year, my goal can't be the same because then I'm not doing anything to progressively, you know, excel in that industry. So now my goal would be 600. So we're still competing. So 500 no, versus I, 600. Why is that? Like, why? What's wrong with wanting to help more people than the year before? I, I, I'm not following why that's a problem. Why is that a problem? It's not a problem. I'm just saying. So at some point, you have to say this is better or this is good or this is higher or this is low. So at some point, you gotta have some type of a matrix because. I mean, this is what I'm trying to say. If you're dealing with a Fortune 500 company, shareholders dictate what ends up happening. If you make the same amount of money as last year and this year, and there's no that competitiveness for money, my understanding from your conversation is that abundance equals money. For me, I have a limiting belief there because I thought abundance was not equal 
to just per se money. It was what money could do wasn't just money. So abundance means that you could have a lot more, not just money. It's abundance like, is not just money. Abundance is subjective. Abundance is not money. I never said abundance was money per se. Money is a form of abundance. So is love. So is, so is, so is, you know, the air that you breathe, like abundance can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. So abundance is like a state of being. Right? It's very subjective. Okay, so it's, it's subjective. So it's a subjective. And yes, hitting, there's nothing wrong. You still have this thing where like hitting targets is a bad thing. Making more money is not bad. Helping more people is not bad. Making your shareholders happy is not so bad. So you're saying the intention behind some companies that are making money, that intention may not be heart-centered. Well, a lot of people's intentions aren't heart centered. So of course that's going to carry over to businesses and entrepreneurs and everybody else, because a lot of people are not necessarily operating from their heart centeredness. They're stuck. They're operating from ego or they're operating from the fear, fear driven, ego driven fear. That is part of their primal programming that we talked about earlier, where scarcity lack, I got to get mine. If I don't get mine, someone else is going to get it. Blah, blah, blah. It's the opposite of an abundant mindset where an abundant mindset would be like, of course, I'm going to help more people this year. 500 people last year felt amazing. 600 would feel even more. I'm going to bring in more abundance. I'm going to funnel it the way my soul tells me to in a way that helps the highest and greatest good for all involved. And I'm going to hit that target because it feels good. It's not a goal that I'm setting outside myself. It's like something that's coming inspired from within, right? Because I'm in alignment with my soul and I'm allowing that to work through me as a vehicle and a vessel to spread good across the planet. But Sarah, you see my and difficult receive, still? And I receive, interview, and receive, and receive. You know what I mean? There's a giving and a receiving, which is part of life, right? Giving and receiving of love, giving and receiving of money. Everything is in flow, which is an abundance mindset, not a scarcity mindset. And when you're in this flow, then of course you're going to receive. Why would you not receive? Why would you say that your services that you're offering that are of high value, that are helping people, 500 people or 600 people, why would you not be open to receiving that? It's like saying, God, I just did all of this good work and you're trying to match me in my vibration, but because I don't feel worthy of it, I'm not going to accept it. That's just, that's just a block. That's just a block. I, know, but Sarah, I interview a lot of individuals. Okay. I'm having a challenge because Others okay. don't speak like you do. Okay. So I'm having this challenge. So That's a good thing. I'm trying to find out. I'm trying to find out. I'm trying to see if you have to ostracize you because you're sticking your head out. Or oh, am yeah. I, found, should I be following everybody else? So put, just put yourself in my shoes. I got 500 interviews, 499 say opposite or have not mentioned what you said, right? And then you're the one person that says that. So I'm just trying to find out Okay, this is a different oh, perspective. Oh yeah, I just get excited. I, I, I love the questions and I love the fact that, um, that I'm the one that sticks out because there's more people that need to be saying this, but I've stepped up to be a leader in spiritual leadership and entrepreneurship and conscious business and conscious brand. So I'm perfectly fine on the hot seat. Okay, cool, cool. Good, because <laughs> you understand where I'm coming from because yeah. I, I mean, Napoleon Hill talked about infinite, infinite intelligence, all the topics that we're Fair talking about too, is, yeah. is, is, is here. I think he goes in more depth of confusing more people in law of success. But I think thinking grow rich for most people is more digestible if they're getting this realm of self-development. I think that's a good place to, to talk about. And I think some of the stuff that you talk about, he mentioned it in the mastermind principle that you do get a lot of other people. You do mastermind with people that are not physically or there. Yeah. So you could have your mastermind that's virtual if you want to call it virtual, right? Or more spiritual kind of a thing, right? So here's my other question. Let's say I'm an entrepreneur and I want to implement what you say in my business. What are the couple of steps that I could take that I could that could put me on that path? Okay, so you cut up my, I, there was something with my phone that cut out, but what I gathered is you're saying that you would want to start to, I mean, let's I- say I'm a, I'm, Let's say I'm an entrepreneur. Okay. I just listened to this conversation. And I would like to implement that. How would I go about input? What are the couple of first couple of steps that I could implement that? Get rid of my ego or be ever of my ego and be able to have more thinking or thoughts about abundance and not just the monetary portion of it where it's bad, where it could be good. 
Okay, well, I'm going to start at the bare bone, like basics, because we're talking about someone that's just starting out as an entrepreneur, because that's who, who I specialize in. I don't specialize okay. in big corporate brands right now. So I specialize in the spiritual entrepreneur and conscious brand leader. Um, the first step would be to first off bare bone, you have to have like, in my experience, some kind of a meditation practice, which you'll also see across the board common with all of the other anybody that's when you read really six book, all the books that you're reading, I guarantee they all have a spiritual or some kind of meditation, intentional practice, some mostly in the morning, or at least some part of their day has to be dedicated, like a sacred ritual to themselves to opening up to receive this kind of guidance, there has to be a container. If you are stuck in the hustle, or if you're stuck in the grind, or you're stuck in what I call the matrix, or you're on that hamster wheel, and you're constantly just trying to turn out goal after goal after goal, what happens is you get really stuck in the masculine energy, which is the doing energy. This is my tip for today. Like the doing energy is not the receiving energy. So if you want to become more of a conscious spiritual business, you have to start to get more into the receiving energy, which is the feminine part of your energy, the receiving part. And it's a different part of your brain. And you're going to be able to tap into that by creating a spiritual practice like meditation or mindfulness and being able to do that on a regular basis. Then insights will start to come to you when you start to create the space and the container for it. That's when you can start to set your intentions even and work intentionally with spirit and say, you know, like now you're starting to work intentionally and you're like, ooh, that's a good idea. I'd like to do this with it. And next, you know, another download, <laughs> download comes in. Another inspired creative spark of insight comes in. You have a journal. You start to journal these ideas out. You recognize that you're starting to receive the spiritual breadcrumbs and it's coming from within. It's coming from an inspired place because what I see so often are people um, burned out in the hustle. So when you are stuck in the doing masculine energy for the sake of doing, but you're not allowing the feminine receiving side of you to receive the guidance from within, what you do is you're just out there in the physical world. You could be crushing it and making a shit ton of money, but what you're doing is you are on the hamster wheel. And what that does is it starts to burn you out and always leads to burnout and overwhelm. You probably notice that if you're doing something for the sake of doing it, you can do it for like an 10 minutes and it can drain your energy and just bog you down. But when you're doing something that just lights you up from the inside, that's inspired, you could do it for 10 hours and feel like five minutes and leave it and, and leave be feeling energized. There's a reason for that. It's because one of these is working in the flow. And one of these is working against the flow of what your soul is trying to get you to do or what your soul is inspired to do. So it's about tapping into this energy and being in the receiving mode of it. First and foremost, if you want to start out into this. Like, that's the first thing. Be committed to having a practice. Sarah, that why they're not teaching this stuff in high school? What did you say? Why are they not teaching this stuff in high school? Why didn't they? I don't know. Uh, why are they not doing it currently? Right now, currently? Well, I see mm -hmm. that they are starting to teach meditation even in sixth grade. I, I know that they're doing energy Reiki healing at the Heart Center down in Phoenix next to me. So mm -hmm. people are getting into energy medicine. We're at the... T we're at the in this consciousness movement where spirituality is becoming even more of a mainstream term. So where it, it's like a domino effect, right? So a certain percentage of the population is waking up to these principles. And when one wakes up, then it's, con it's sort of like contagious. It helps other the next person wake up because our energy is helping to raise the vibration. So it's like a tipping point. It's like, just imagine like little dominoes, you hit one domino and the next one falls and it starts to spin all the way around the planet. And that's what's happening. People are waking up to this and it is starting to be integrated in schools. It's starting to be inter integrated in workplaces. I know, Intel, a big corporation, has yoga during lunch now and things like that and other mindfulness practices and yoga teachers coming in during lunch. Energy medicine over here at the Heart Center, which is a major, you know, allopathic, you know, hospital. So you'll see it seeping into mainstream more and more as the years go by. So you ask what's going to happen in the future. That's what I see. I see sound healing. I see, you know, working with sound frequencies to heal, to raise the vibration, which has been an ancient thing. It's not new. We're just starting to catch up to it. So anyways. Oh, I, I, I believe in sound therapy for sure. I mean, they've done a lot of documentaries on YouTube that everybody could check it out. And they yeah. did it with the snowflakes. And, and when they put music and different things, it has different effects. So I totally, I'm a big and Think believer. about that. Think about that. And water, they've shown, has memory. And your body Definitely. is 85% or 90% water. So it's like you are walking around 
imprinted with the vibration of what you're thinking, feeling, and speaking to yourself consciously and in your head 24 seven. And then you're like this vibrational resonance attracting to you what it is. So it's like, it's all about our own spiritual inner growth process first. This is what I call our inner purpose, which everybody on the planet has one. It's what we all have in common. We're here to evolve our soul. That's our inner purpose. But once you get to a certain point and you start to awaken that heart center and you start to move into your heart chakra space and you start to transcend ego enough to where you want to operate from a place of abundance, love, oneness, collaboration, and things like that in a higher frequency, um, where was I going with this? Um, I sort of space out when I start to channel and I get into the flow. Um, did you have a question for me? I, I see a bunch of questions rolling too, and it's sort of no, well, somebody asked, what's your sign? I, I, I mean, what's my sign? Yes. I'm a Libra. Libra. Okay. That, that's right. I mean, I like Oprah Winfrey because she's an Aquarius. We have the same birthday. So maybe that I, you mentioned her name a couple of times. So I was very, I was like, oh, cool. That's, that's nice. But okay. So here's a question. So we went from the basics. So they need to get into some type of meditation. Yeah. What else? Okay, well, um, well, you have to start to receive the guidance. And then what I teach, I mean, I can't go into everything on this call, but, um, you know, so what I teach spiritual entrepreneurs is what I call a, a yin, uh, the four-step yin-yang creation cycle, which is working with the masculine and feminine polarities to be able to receive, whole, you, know, expand, you know, expand your container to receive. This is done on the energetic level. Um, and then aligning your divine masculine energy, the energy that takes action, big action, not sitting on your ass waiting for things to manifest, thinking things are just going to come to you because you're meditating on your couch kind of thing. People think people that are very, you know, driven, which I'm very driven, you know, used to poo poo that idea. Like I need to be out hustling my ass off, you know, crushing it. And I would be addicted to that high. Right. And think that, you know, that was just being lazy. It's not lazy because that's just one piece of the puzzle. One piece of the puzzle is receiving. The other one is taking massive action on the downloads that come through. And so here's where most people get caught up. If you're watching this, you receive the guidance. Your soul is sending you. You're starting to journal it out. It's an idea. It's a creation. It's your next project. It's the way you want to move your company to the next level. It's whatever. And this will work with your big CEOs and your big corporations as well and how they want to move their business forward. You're starting to receive the downloads. You're journaling it. You're following these spiritual breadcrumbs and you're letting this sort of resonate with you. And you're like, wow, and you're getting these ideas. It's going to lead to an action. It's what I call a sacred action because usually it's going to get you out of your comfort zone. Remember, going back to that primal brain, we don't like to be out of our comfort zone because the ego-driven false fear steps in, the one that thinks you're going to die, but you're really not. Well, you it's know? also for safety, too. You get out no, of comfort zone, you die. that's real fear. That's real fear. It's totally normal to be scared if you're standing in front of a saber-toothed tiger or you're standing on the edge of a cliff. You should be scared as shit there, and you should be fearful. It's not so scary. Or, or I'm scared when I stand in front of my wife and she demands something, so that could be the same thing. I don't encounter tigers. I have an attorney or, for or whatever, you know what I mean? Like standing on the edge of a cliff or this or that. That's real fear. Ego-driven fear is when you want to ask for a raise, you want to quit your job and start your dream business, you want to ask somebody out on a date and you don't want to feel rejected. These are all the ways that your ego-driven fear, the false fear that, that makes you react as if you're going to die. So you avoid it, you run from it, you hide from it, you don't do it. But in actuality, it's an ego-driven false fear that's just attaching to that primal brain of yours and using that to twist and distort what's actually happening, keeping you from stepping forward. So the next stage is sacred action. Sacred action usually will get you out of your comfort zone. Well, it always will get you out of your comfort zone because you're expanding, which means you're expanding into something new that didn't exist before. A new version of yourself or a new job or a new career, or a new relationship, whatever the situation may be, but you're expanding out, which causes fear, which means you have to take fear. You have to take steps through the fire, through the fear to get to the other you side. Gotta walk through it. And that you got to walk through it. And that's the sacred action. And most people will stop there. Maybe it's so like, that's where you think a lot of maybe it's like a big organization wants to create this conscious brand, but he's scared as shit on what his other his you know shareholders or what his other his partners are going to think about it. But he has this new idea on how to lead this organization in this new direction that's going to be more of a conscious brand. It's going to have this and this and this and this, and he has all these ideas, but he doesn't want to promote it to or talk about it in a board meeting to anybody because everybody's going to laugh at him. Well, guess what? That's a no, everybody's going to crucify him. 
That's he's going to be action. replaced. That's a sacred action. And guess what? You know, Steve Jobs, there's plenty of people that have walked out and taken different, you know, walked out of organizations when they wasn't fit. And these may be bad examples, but you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm not an expert on every single example I can share with you on the spot. But if you study entrepreneurship, you'll know that. So yeah, most of them were assholes and they had to do what they needed to do. And they sometimes... stepped out of their comfort zone and they took sacred action. Yeah. Yeah. And they and at the risk of being rejected, which is that primal fear stepping in that gets you out of the tribe, so to speak, might get you ostracized from the tribe. And that's when it's a false fear. It's not really true. You're not going to die, but your brain thinks it is. Your, your reptilian brain still thinks it's a survival strategy. So if you're in that situation, pick up the phone, call Sarah in Arizona so you don't get <laughs> kicked out of your board. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you make that phone call. So do you have an 800 number when they're going through that kind of shit? Like, Sarah, <laughs> we need some, some, we need some good downloads right now. This is a good time. <laughs> like you're, as, you need to come fly in. We need to get some good downloads. <laughs> We're about to have no company. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if you're watching this, this video, do not do anything crazy like that. Unless you talk to Sarah before, consult on the <laughs> shit you're going to No, 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 no. This is about tapping into your own inner guru, your inner guru. I like how you don't want to take responsibility for that. Somebody well, what, I teach, what I teach people, I, what I teach people is how to tap into their own creative genius and their own inner guru so that they can live in a soul-aligned business for them, not a soul-aligned business according to me. You know what I mean? My job is to help open them up so they can build a soul brand for them, which is coming from their soul, not my soul. But they're getting influenced because but I, I provide strategies and techniques, techniques and tips and foundations and everything that needs to. I provide the vehicle and the blueprint that helps get you there. But they got to come fill in the blanks by being the uh, the active participant. No, the they got to walk through the door. They got to walk, gotta through, walk the through the door and they got to be the active participant and vehicle to start to bridge this gap between the spiritual and the material between, you know, what your book you're reading right now with that, you know, between the spiritual and the physical. So you can start to manifest from a soul level. Manifesting from a soul level is a totally different flow to it than manifesting from ego. You can blood, sweat, and tears your way all the way to success. And you can make a ton of money doing it through all your blood, sweat, and tears. Nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. And there's plenty of people that do it, but it's a totally different vibe and energy to be able to elevate yourself while in alignment with your soul. It doesn't need to feel like burnout, overwhelm. You don't have to burn yourself out and not have have a, a fitness life or not have a, you know other areas of your life in balance you get to have it all when you're working in alignment it's not one or the other got it sarah how do people find you or my last question what's your what's your favorite self-help book um i just read um paula coelho the alchemist i really love that one and i just got around reading um eckhart tolle's the good the uh the new earth i loved both of those Cool, cool, cool. Um, how do people find you? Right now they can find me on my website always at sarah-rose.net. And then I'm on Instagram mostly at spiritual CEO. That's my main place I hang out on social media. My website has links to my podcast, how to work with me, and um, yeah, everything about me and my programs and everything like that at sarah-rose.net, which you can also usually find in my, in my um, bio link in Instagram. I want to thank you so much for taking this time. Um, but I'm not done with you, just so you know. We're gonna. Oh, okay, because because you still didn't ask me. Oh, yeah, I think you did ask me the questions. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not. I, we're not done with this because I don't like asking questions that I have not done research on. So if I haven't, then I can't have a no. I can't have a good conversation. See, I, I don't do any research on my questions because I just trust that whatever guidance is going to come through comes through. You know what I mean? So like I specifically don't prepare for interviews because and I don't even know, like sometimes like you said, you're going to ask me certain questions. I don't even know if you asked me those questions. We didn't even ask those questions. We, they didn't I don't up. even think you asked those questions. And I don't even like to um, prepare because that's being too constrictive. I want be I want my inspirations to flow. And so that's Definitely. what I tap into. But on ego and how we utilize it or my, my biggest question that I want to do research is, is there a good ego and there is a bad ego? Or there's just ego. So I, I want to find out if there's a comparison because there's yeah, just ego. Male, male. Either the, you're judging it is you're using ego to judge your ego. But here's the thing. 
you can use your ego for good. You can use it for your own soul growth process. It's not good or bad, but it, I mean, I guess if you want to label it as good when you're using it for things that elevate your soul, I guess you could call that good. But even when you're stuck in your ego and you're not using it to elevate your soul, that's a good, that's part of your journey. There's a big part of my journey I was operating specifically from ego and not heart centeredness. So I was very competitive, very driven, uh, very worried about competition, very worried about getting my piece of the pie and, the, and, and me getting more, me getting less, but someone else that was going to get more than me and be I mean, more worried about bullshit. that. That's entitlement. I don't even agree with that shit at all. That's, like, that's ego. Entitlement. That's ego. That's ego. Okay, cool. Yeah. So we're labeling ego. But yeah. but my, my, my biggest question was because when we talk about auto-suggestion and Napoleon Hill talks about it, that I deserve it, that I'm good, this, this. If you keep saying I'm good looking, you know, so the I'm having a, I'm, I'm going to need to go define it for myself and I need to do more research on my own. Here's the thing. I think this is going to help you. This is going to, I know where you're going with this. What's the difference between confidence and ego? Now okay, that's where, I knew that's, that's where you're going with this. Okay, that's where you're going with this. It is okay to like to look beautiful. It is okay to like to have a physical body that works out at the gym, that's fit, to have money in the bank, to drive a nice car, to wait, to live in a mansion if that's what your soul really has inspired you to do, to have a negative edge pool if that's what you really want, to travel or whatever. You can have all of these things. But are you identified with it as part of your worth? That's the ego. You can have everything when you don't need it, but when you need it to be happy or to validate yourself, now you are trapped and you are a victim of it and you need more and more and more. This is why you see celebrities that have everything and they're miserable and they commit suicide because it's not about that. It's about, it's about are you attached to it for your worth and for your validation and attached to this as your form of your happiness? That would be the attachment. It's not the, it's not, the having of the things. Remember, you can't demonize the material. It's part of the spiritual. It's all one. There is no separation. Everything came from a creative idea at some point. Even this pen was an idea at some point. It came from somebody's idea, right? And then it manifested from spiritual into physical form. But if I'm attached to this pen, if I lose it, and now I think I'm a piece of shit because I don't have a green pen anymore, that's where it becomes the problem because now I'm attached to that as part of my worth. So make a lot of money, give the shit to your wife, and then go to the mountain with no attachments. <laughs> Just live your life in alignment. Allow yourself to be happy and joyful. Receive the abundance that's flowing to you without guilt, and move from move into a heart centered place. That's their soul journey. That's the soul evolution. It's not about good or bad. It's not about have and have not. It's about do you need that stuff to be happy? I mean, I think COVID just showed us how much we don't need to be happy. Isn't that oh, a great, a of, isn't that a a great spiritual lesson that we were all just given during the midst of this consciousness movement where so many people are like, hmm, maybe now that I have some time to think and I'm not stuck in the grind and I'm not stuck in this matrix and this hustle wheel, maybe I should explore something that I'm passionate about. So many entrepreneurs are reaching out to me, sparking their businesses now because they want to move into something that they're passionate about. And they don't want to go back to doing something that drains their soul. And at the same time, we were given this awesome opportunity as a big time out. It's like, we're all sent to our rooms to go think about our lives for like a few months to think about what it is we're really doing and what you really, really need to be happy and how little that actually is. That's abundance. That's abundance. And it's not money. It's not a car. It's not any of that. That's abundance. Remember, abundance is a state of being. Doing, doing is the masculine energy. We're moving into a state of, which is fine. We're not demonizing the doing, that taking sacred action. We're not, de you know, we have feminine side that receives, but we're moving into a state of beingness. It's about being more, doing less, but getting more shit done and even making more money because you're in alignment. It's not about only now it doesn't cause you to struggle and it doesn't cause you to burn out and it doesn't cause you to like count the clock or addiction or addiction. Yeah. And it doesn't count you to, you know, the count Well, is in the form of business. It doesn't cause you to count the clock anymore. You can't wait for it to be over because you don't really love what you do. Now it's like, I could do this for free. I could do this forever because it lights me up, but now I'm getting paid abundantly for it too. It doesn't get sweeter than that. You know what I mean? Like what I'm doing right now. I, got, I, I would do this regardless, you know what I mean? Like now I'm in line with what I would do no matter what. 
no matter what, if no one paid me another red cent on the penny to do what I'm, I'm doing, I would be doing this shit no matter what, because I'm in line with it and it lights me up. It fuels me. It doesn't deplete me. That's the difference. If your business Sarah, is depleting, you need to have a conversation with my wife, because she's not going to let me do this for, for <laughs> it's the crazy part. I actually had one of the coaches three days ago. He called me up and he's like, uh, I want to have a serious private conversation with you and I want to do it over the phone. I was like, you serious. I thought someone died. I thought something serious happened. He's like, what's your alternative motive with the platform? I was like, I don't understand what you mean. He's like, I'm not seeing the course that you're selling. I'm not seeing the mastermind that you're selling. I'm not seeing the books. I'm not seeing it. So how do you make your money? What's, what's, what's the agenda behind this? I was like, we don't make money. This is not what we do for money. He's like, well, I don't understand. It's costing you money because I did the cash. Like, literally, this guy has actually has sat down, has thought about it, has looked at the numbers, has looked at He has figured out the cost better than I could figure out the cost of operation. <laughs> and he was telling me, like, maybe you should hire him as a CPA because he's, he's right on. Holy shit, that's how much we're spending. He's like, so what's the ulterior motor? I was like, listen, I don't give a shit if they pay us or not. We'll still do the same thing. We'll still do it. Thank God that our business performs and we do that. But he's like, but it's not making money. You don't, you never sell anything. I was like, yeah, because we don't have anything to sell. He's like, but I don't understand. I was like, listen, dude, I've been telling the same thing to my wife. She doesn't get it just like you. We don't give a shit about the money. Now, I'm pretty sure somehow, somewhere at some point in the future, we're going to make money. It's yeah. going to come. But that was not why we built the platform. We didn't care about the money yeah do we need the money of course have we invested money of course is it going to come from somewhere of course but we didn't go from the aspect of what can we do so we can make the money now let's build around it we said what do we love to do and then the money is going to come later wow okay i love this this is so intentional this is what i'm talking about following your passion and letting your inspiration guide you and this is the other piece that we want to leave with the entrepreneurs like find something that you do that you would do it no matter what anyways like what is your passion what you know allow that to come to you and then take action towards it and don't let and don't figure out how you're going to monetize it even right away because that shit can come later of course you can turn this into something that's going to feed up you know all of these little pieces are clicking for and they're going to come into perfect alignment at the perfect time and i'm sure it'll generate revenue and then whatever you do with that's going to be beautiful too because it was it was started from a heart centered inspired from within place so you're and that's what i told them too i mentioned it i said we're building the the app and and i literally called about 60 of the coaches that i've done interviews in the past not even a single person like i was prepared to tell them about the fight the financial side this how much you're gonna get this how like i was prepared literally from the 20 that showed up to the LA to the studio, not even a single one person ever asked what about the money? How do we get paid? How do I pay for my expenses to show up? Nobody asked. And it was crazy. So I told my wife, I said, listen, either I'm so good at explaining this stuff that nobody asked or nobody literally cared because they all wanted to contribute because they saw what I was doing. And I don't think... I'm that good for people to believe in my mission. I, I just said, listen, we want to gather a lot of influencers. We want to put good content because I'm tired of the stupid YouTube having a lot of ads and everybody wants to sell shit when I'm watching the video. Can I get the content? And if I see if it's good, I have enough information or I have enough EQ to come and buy your product or your next level of coaching. But don't try to sell it to me without me getting to know who you are. It's like, going and asking a girl for marriage before you even went out for a coffee. Like, that's retarded. Like, nobody does that. Nobody should do that, right? If everybody's, anybody's done it. Don't. So, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, let me get the good content. Let me see that you know your materials and you could take me to the next level. And then I'm going to come to you and obviously I'm going to pay for your services because there is nothing for free. And it will be very retarded for me to think that I'm going to get coaching from you for free. You're giving your time. Obviously, you need to get compensated. Right. So when you start from that, I think everybody, you, you almost never need to say that. If yeah. that is, it, it that's, kind yeah, that's of, the comes out. When you're working in alignment, all of the other components will match up easily and effortlessly for you. This is what I'm talking about, the ease of alignment. You don't have to have, you know what I mean? The ease of alignment, it can't be explained until you're in that flow. It's completely different. Of course, you have a funding source or this or that, but you started it with, you didn't start it from the ego thinking, wait, 
how am I going to get mine? What is this going to do? Like, how do I monetize this? Like, blah, 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 blah. You just started with the inspiration. You allowed the inspiration to just, you followed one spiritual breadcrumb to the next, to the next, to the next, despite what anybody else had to say about her input. You just followed your guidance. This is what I'm talking about. And then the pieces, the components will line up easily and effortlessly, almost like magic. You don't even have to think about it. You may have an inspired idea that you need to take action on, like start the platform or something like that. But all of the other cooperative components will start popping into your experience at the perfect time and place. And it's I effortless. Agree. And you don't even experience, you, until you experience it, it sounds like a bunch of woo-woo BS that you don't get understand until you actually like step into that kind but of- But that's, that's the entrepreneur's responsibility. If they haven't experienced it like the way someone else experience, experienced it, I think that's that's the sign for you to go seek it. If if somebody says this book is amazing, it's changed my life, it is your job to go find out what was inside this that changed their life. It's not their job to convince you that yeah. it's for you to go figure yeah. it out. Like yeah. there is response, there is work that needs to be done yeah. on your side. Yeah, that, that, there's no there's no there's no need to convince anybody of anything because everybody's always at their own place. It's just like once you know the truth and you know how things work energetically and with alignment and things like that, you got to share it. You're feeling compelled to share it. That's why you're holding that book. He was compelled to share it. He had to put it in a book. You know what I mean? There's a million books just like that. You know, like and and, and just so you know, it's so crazy. Just so you know, Napoleon Hill. Both of his major works are in public domain. That's the crazy part. Thinking Grow Rich, 1937, is in public domain. Law Success, 1928, is in public domain. I didn't read that. It's only because it was in public domain. Not that many people would have passed that around for free without wanting to monetize it. They weren't worried about copyrights. They were just giving it to other people. And I think if Napoleon Hill was alive today, uh, he would be proud of his work. And my suggestion to more authors is give away your shit. Put your book in public domain, let everybody take advantage of it, and you won't worry about money coming back. Because if Napoleon Hill was alive today and he had a mastermind group that he was teaching people, people will be paying millions of dollars for that mastermind group. He would not be worrying about money and monetization. Yeah, because you just give his good shit away for free. He wasn't worried about it. Yeah. And that's the key element for a lot of people. And they don't get it. They want to hold on to it. They think by protecting it, they can make money and they can help people. But See, actually, that's what, you're, like, you're tapping in on what I was touching on, on the whole like ego's need to hold and control and to keep and to like see competition. Like that's exactly what I'm talking about. You leave with generosity knowing that of course the universe is abundance. Of course things will flow to you because you're leading from, you know, you don't have to worry about how you're going to get paid. The universe can line that up for you easily and effortlessly when the right time, when it comes. But it's almost like a test of faith. It's like, are you doing it for the right reasons? Or are you doing it for ego-centered reasons? It's like when you finally step forward and you can step through the fear of whatever fear pops up for you and just follow the spiritual breadcrumb that was given, it's like a rite of passage almost. It's like then other opportunities start to, to open up. So Sarah, till we monetize, can you have a conversation with my wife and let her know I'm on the right path? So she just <laughs> <laughs> the other day I told her, I said, listen, if I ever die, don't sell the stuff that I told you for what I bought. Don't sell it for what I told you I bought them. And she's like, what do you mean? You lied? I said, obviously I lied. There's no way you would have let me build a $50,000 studio. There's no way. But if I ever die, don't sell it for what I told you I bought it because that's a lie. So I will make a document for what I paid for all of this stuff so you have the right numbers. So just sell it for the right numbers if you ever get rid of it. So we had a whole, but she was laughing. She's like, you're admitting to me that you lied. I'm like, yeah, I'm coming clean before anything happens. So just want to make sure, just get it off my shoulder. That, you know, don't, the cameras don't cost 50 bucks. It costs 5000 Just because you don't know, don't sell it for 50 bucks because somebody's going to get a good deal and we're going to lose a lot of money. So just sell it for what it's worth. Just do some research on it. So. That's funny. Why are you laughing at this? I'm having a marriage or issue. You're laughing at this. <laughs> she's going to hang me one of these days. Hopefully, oh, she's not watching this live session. That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> Listen, thank you so much for taking this, this time and being here. How much is gas in Arizona right now? 
for everybody who's in LA, I want to burn some butts. Uh, how, what, what, how I much think gas? like 229, maybe 229 or 239 for premium. Oh, for premium, that's that's still that's not bad. That's not that lower than LA. LA is like still at the 289, three ish. It's mm -hmm. crazy how some people pay so much for gas. It's, listen, I love Scottsdale. That, that if I ever want to, Scottsdale is my town. If I ever want to, but I got my family here, so I can't move. So it's just a little bit different. A lot of attachments we got. I got I to gotta stick around with everybody else. But thank you so much for taking this time. Hopefully we'll do a few other videos on a few other topics. Let me do a little bit more research on it. And meanwhile, if you need anything from our platforms, if any way we could, you know, help out, get the message out, don't be shy. Let us know. Okay. Thank you. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.